So I'm Amanda Nelson, the research hydrologist with the Sustainable Water Management Unit here in Stoneville, Mississippi. I'm here to welcome you to the second version of the National Center for Alluvial Aquifer Research Seminar Series. Um, from this point forward, we'll have two speakers per uh, session. And this is on the first Wednesday of every month, although we are skipping January because of the holidays. Um, just some housekeeping stuff, skipping January, that would be easy. Um, we will have time for questions after each speaker. You can go ahead and enter questions in the chat as you think of them, or you can hold your question until the speaker is done and we will call on you if you do the raise your hand thing. Um, and there will be recordings available on the NCAR website of this and all future sessions, hopefully. Uh, so to start off, we're going to start with uh, Dr. Sasindran Anavali, also known as SAFI. He's been with ARS for 22 years. He's a soil scientist focusing primarily on water management and modeling. And he's here today to talk about quantifying impacts of alternate wetting and drying flood water management on rice water use and methane emissions. Do we cheer that they can hear us? You can cheer if you like. Yay! <laughs> I'll turn it over to you, Sassy. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda, for uh, the kind introduction to conducting this. Uh, sessions and kindly inviting me to present this. Uh, as you see on the screen, this is the title of my talk, Impacts of uh, Alternate Wetting and Drying Flood Water Management on Rice Water Use and methane Emissions. Uh, as a water management scientist, I'm more concerned with the water use and methane emission is a byproduct. But that becomes critical in the, more, in the present time. Before getting into my talk, I would like to make a disclaimer. PSDA does not guarantee warranty or recommend any instrumentation. I'm going to show in the instruments in the presentation. <clears throat> it's only for demonstration if I use a brand name. Um, why we should be interested in rice? Half of the global population subs still subsists on that. You know, even with the modern changes in um, food patterns and things. Um, coming to flood and rice, flood and rice is uh, grown in abundant fields, filled with water. Okay? It's a very highly productive system. We have 50 percent of the people as a subsist means it should be very productive. But the problem with the flooded system is the soil is flooded. It gives anaerobic condition to the soil and all the methanogenic bacteria flourish in that and they produce methane. So when you grow food, you're doing some evil. So that's the problem with the uh, rice. So how we can help those systems, that's my opinion. So International Rice Research Institute recommend this alternate wet and dry system. It's a system in which, you know, um, initially the Field is flooded, then uh, left to dry, and when the water level goes like like 15 centimeters below the soil in the water table, level, then when well, wet again. <clears throat> so what the researchers, you know, it's it's a use over uh, maybe 50 years. So what they what different researchers find is it reduces water use substantially. And like 20 to 80% wide, wide hit margin um, because different soils, different systems in the world. So it's, it's, it's cultivated all over the world. And methane emissions, you know, good about the AWD is um, when it cuts down water use, it also cuts down uh, methane emissions by about 50% uh, because it it reduces the amount of time the soil is kept anaerobic. So it introduces aerobic, then again, you know, takes back to anaerobic. So 
why methane is important? If you take uh, the warming potential of uh, methane, it's 30 times. If the CO2 warms the air 1 degree, methane will warm, warm it 30, 30 degrees. So that's the potential of it. And it stays over 100 years, you can stay in the air without, you know, decomposing and uh, getting out of the air. Um, about tenth of all the global emissions of uh, methane is from ice. So the main key message here is you need to manage the water in you know innovatively so that you can reduce the emissions and uh, optimize the production. <coughs> Sorry. The main objective of my presentation or my study is quantify and compare water requirements and methane emissions from large pound scale fields. Okay. We talk about water requirements. You know, when I started my career, um, I was using large scale field isolators. It's like a million dollars. Every year we spend a million dollars and you know, after a few years, we get uh, some data and uh, know what, how much water is used by the crop. And by the time things change, and you know, it's it's like a you know big game. But coming to present day, any covariance method, you can easily monitor water, CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, and or many trace gases, and use this method for uh, monitoring water, methane, etc. So that's the main. Uh, so any covariance method, I mean, <laughs> recently, George Baba from Lycor, he published a book, 700 pages, okay? So you want to know exactly the whole story of the method, you need to read the whole book. I'm going to put it in a few slides, okay? A couple of slides. So this is um, flowing water in a stream. Um, uh, there is a muddy bottom, otherwise uh, you don't see the turbidity. So the turbulence um, <clears throat> painted by I think Leonardo da Vinci in 1500. Okay. So this is, uh, I mean, people have noticed this uh, uh, chaotic behavior, the turbidity in the water, and maybe they, they not thought a day will come, they'll be able to track an individual, um, you know, eddy or a turbidity and measure how much material it is carrying uh, with its uh, in its life. So that became possible today. So the basics, well, the basics of the method, now, see, this is a uh, wind speed, the arrow represents the wind, wind, wind direction and speed, this vector. So, and one fundamental thing is, wind flows exactly horizontal. It never flow down or up. Once it go up, it will be the whole air will be lost because there is a pressure gradient force in the atmosphere. Because when you go up, um, pressure pressure falls down. So that way pressure gradient. But that is balanced by the hydrostatic, um, you know, what do you call it, um, uh, rho g h, the weight pulling it down for the uh, acceleration due to gravity. So wind is at a hydrostatic equilibrium. So it flows straight. It carries all the eddies with it. All the eddies come. So you just go a little bit higher, then speed increases. So some force is acting. When come down, it, it goes down. So the frictional force, you know, try to pull the wind backward. So it kicks up eddies, circular, circulations and that uh, now with the uh, with the eddy covariance method you are tracking those eddies and see how much is how much matter energy momentum it carries see at the uh, earth's boundary layer there is mass mass means in the air um, you can say carbon dioxide water uh, oil trace gases and energy is the sensible heat uh, latent heat and momentum is the wind speed so it carries all those. So usually you can, if you can track the eddies, 
you can get all those. So, but the method, you know, as we can visualize is mathematically very complex and requires a lot of care in the method to set up policy data. But if you can do it, it's really good because you play with the meters and then, you know, closed chambers or measuring uh, trace gases. Uh, if you end up spending a lot of time and money, but this relatively is much cheaper and uh, time saving. So first, you know, but this method with all its complexity, um, by 1990, people started uh, measuring continuously over a day, but with a lot of uh, efforts. Okay. By 2000, a lot of networks were established, Ruxnet, you know, Asianet, uh, Australian post, post flights. Um, but all slightly, you know, um, <coughs> old instruments. But if, right now, what I use is uh, uh, most of those uh, things evolved around 2015. So it's very um, modern because with the evolution of uh, you know computers, computing power, um, chips, you know, uh, computer chips and things, and the multimedia uh, available over internet and things. So this became possible today. <coughs> So 2015 is the data logger. Um, you can see uh, it looks like this. You see, it's, uh, 2018 I bought. You know, it's entirely different. You know, the three years the whole thing changed. So it's very dynamic. If I know, if I say I know something today, and uh, tomorrow I go buy this instrument, oh no, I can't work with that. <laughs> so it's something new. So it's very dynamic. It's evolving. Uh, any convenience, you, just to uh, let you know the basic principles, okay? These, these are the sensors uh, sticking up in the sky, sky and uh, there's a battery and uh, uh, solar panel at the bottom, you can see here. Um, so the basic thing working behind is flux density. You know, of uh, all the space gases, water, latent heat, transmissible heat, everything is proportional to the mean covariance between vertical velocity, scalar, and its fluctuations. Um, when you say vertical velocity, with the flow vertical, with the vertical component of horizontal. So, it's a curve, you know, horizontal, I mean, uh, horizontal, meridional, and vertical. So, I, the vertical component. Uh, this um, three, three, um, the wind in three dimensions is measured by uh, the anemometer. It's the 3D anemometer. That's what you see there. Then uh, densities of uh, water and CO2, because of its spectral absorption properties, uh, it can be measured with a single instrument. Uh, then there is mathematics to differentiate between water and CO2. It's used by an infrared gas analyzer. That's Earth guys for short form. Then uh, methane is measured with uh, a laser based gas analyzer. Then all the micrometer to go with it because we need to interpret why what is happening and you know, whether you measure is accurate enough or, uh, you know, you are measuring junk or whatever. So we have a uh, micromet uh, suit of uh, measurements, um, temperature of air, latitude, humidity, uh, soil temperature, canopy temperature, soil water, solar radiation, you know, coming, going, everything. Uh, photosynthetic, photo flux density, that is PPFT, middle direction, all those. <coughs> So you see, theory, I just, you know, it's essential to show this so that I don't show equations because uh, I don't show the science, uh, I mean, all the derivations behind this. Uh, at the top is uh, the flux. Flux is, uh, uh, rho A is the air, dry density of air. W is the vertical speed. And S is the scalar of interest, either 0, 2, H2, or, or whatever. So, Dry air, you know, per meter given that the density, meter per second is the speed, and then uh, scalar, uh, gram of 
uh, substance in Yama right here. So it comes with this unit, gram, carbon dioxide, some meters per second. So, but as I said, there's nothing close vertical in there. So why, how we can measure with this equation? So then uh, people uh, come to, um, or we can say applied Reynolds uh, here and expanded that. And finally, uh, you you cut down all these terms. There the assumptions comes. So the experiment becomes complicated because all these terms are uh, removed to retain only this term. So the flux is a drier density, then fluctuations of particular wheel speed and fluctuations of the scalar. So there the complexity comes. Um, so because of all those uh, things are removed, so it will be very strict in conducting the experiment. So flat topography, that's the first requirement. Then horizontal homogeneity in the field. You grow the crop and one, one plant goes up and you know, a weed comes up and you know, remove all the homogeneity. You can't believe the data you get because all these terms dominate because I cut down like seven terms and retain one. All the seven terms dominate and you get junk. So that's one reason I can see uh, my technician John always drives around the you know <laughs> around the field and uh, see if things are okay or not. I ask him to go twice sometimes. So so that's where we manage. So meteorological conditions, wind wind is a must because if there is no wind, there's no heat. Okay. So there should be wind. Then steady state because whatever comes in goes out. There's nothing stays there. So that's the same as the mass conservation, because mass is not accumulated and dry. So negligible vertical density, because um, we, are, we are using density of air, and there is a gradient of density, then the equations uh, collapse. So all this, uh, plus turbulent fluxes should be constant with height. At the bottommost layer of the air, you can see that uh, this is where all your uh, activities are, uh, the plant environment. That's the microclimate. And immediately above is the roughness sublayer. So the roughness is the friction force of vomit. And literally go up, uh, slowly all the eddies, you know, they um, merge with each other and become small, become larger, and more, uh, you know, less chaos, uh, more sense prevails. When you go up. That's called the constant flux layer. So you put an instrument there, uh, either you put uh, one height or a little bit higher or you know, move sideways, it doesn't matter much. But you put in the roughness sub layer, it depends on where you put the sensor. You move it, you get another way. So it's it's uh, it's always uh, you know you have to watch and put in the constant flux layer. So his his head is in the constant flux layer. And I am sitting in the, my head is on the <laughs> roughness of the I breathe uh, with a lot of difficulty, but he is smiling. He is breathing easy. So it's because he is in the constant flux layer. Um, so the data processing side, I think I should touch about this also. So everything voltage is, okay? Every, everything measured is voltage. So the IRGA, the gas analyzers produce. 20 hertz, 20 times in a second, the data is produced. And micromet is sampled at six seconds. All this data is sent to uh, the, here, this guy. That's the smart flux. And it's a microcomputer working 24 hours. It takes all the signals, convert the signals to data, and uh, compute the flux covariance, store, and send to a network. Um, I have a network here. Do you have that time? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to get on the network now because it can take time. So you can, if I can uh, let anybody, you know, if the farmer is interested, uh, again, give uh, the an account to him and he can log in and he can get all the data and things like that. So this is the 
uh, 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 dedicated uh, smartphone. That's what uh, R.C. Tucker, our uh, uh, respected AIDA director, he allowed me to have that with all this. So I was able to do that. Uh, <clears throat> then data processing um, is at uh, you know process at uh, 20 hertz then processed using any pro software. Then corrections are applied. You know, these are the corrections applied. I'm not going into details of that. Because it's all uh, required for, uh, because um, you do a lot of, I mean, these are the instruments in the field. It's never ideal. You want to be like that, but it never uh, happens like that. So all these corrections are applied. Okay. This is a tower. You can see this tower. It's not made in the USA. The whole country did not, does not make this kind of towers. It can be aligned exactly vertical. There's a bubble in the vertical, and you can and the, um, another uh, you know horizontal level also. And this has four legs in this of the tripods here. Uh, it was it's manufactured in Belgium, and I imported to Britain. So that's that's a uh, um, using because you know uh, every uh, the sensors on that. That make requires to be exactly level because any any of this thing you get slightly bad reading because for especially wind because wind goes horizontal if the your instrument is still that it gives uh, uh, unwanted uh, errors so that's one correction here it's called axis rotation for angular tilt correction so. Slightly tilt, maybe one degree, up to five degree, it will correct. But if more than that, you are wrong. So, um, coming to our study, you know, is discussing with the farmer here, you know, <laughs> telling you what any coherence is, and he did not understand much. But he conducted the experiment for us. Can't believe it. He conducted the uh, heart control flooding on one side, heart um, rate flooding by on another side of his field. Then we installed the instruments and uh, we, the study was possible. Uh, this is, you know, he's uh, putting the uh, burns so that we can navigate. Then location in the model farms, 25 hectare, uh, more than that, 30 is the thing. You know, these are the experiment details. Zero grade, uh, zero grade and level. Then uh, flooded using multiple inlet. Uh, and pipeline of this okay. And irrigation is as usual at the head of the field. And uh, control flood is 10 to 15 centimeters roughly, falling, falling depth. Then AWD, there is slight deviation from the, you know, what uh, others recommend, um, you know, uh, flood initially, then go on the dry to 15 centimeters below the soil level for the water level to dip. And our farmer, you know, we can't, we don't compensate him for anything. So he did his own way. So he never go, he said he called it mud dry, and you don't see dry mud and cracking in that. So, so he will go to this level. See the soil at the top will be dry. And if you dig a little bit, you can see with the water and that's the way the things are. So, uh, coming to the data we collected, um, see, every year the weather is unique. It never the climate never gets repeated. That's so you see a lot of variations between years when the data collected. So my uh, you know you have to get really into the field to collect data. Um, people you have to brave really because we see have encountered snakes. Yeah, snakes is uh, not exception, so or yeah, it's, it's the rule. So, worse this guy, planes? Yeah. is it worse on snakes on planes? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so snakes is, uh, is part of the rice because of you know, many, many snakes snakes the water, and, you know, that. and this guy, that's right. So, in the LAI, um, two years you can see. There is not too much difference between LWD and theory. LA is concerned. The flux computations, uh, once in the, the flux is computed from the, uh, the smart flux and you take it out, okay? Then we put, take it to Toby. Toby is a, a interactive, you know, man machine mix type of uh, software. 
you can put it inside and you can try to clean it, uh, grab, gap in it, and uh, you know, get the data the way you want. Sometimes sit with that whole day by evening, you know, your eyes will become bulge out. So, this is uh, top one is uh, uh, sensible heat, uh, this is latent heat, latent heat is uh, basically cooperation. Then how do you say that, okay, you measure it makes sense. So we try to see uh, what is the energy coming into the system is what is going on. If there is no balance between that, there is no balance. So that's what you see here. So the correlation between, uh, you know, uh, H plus Le is the total energy taken out of the system and R and minus G, you know, the horizontal axis here. Okay, that the net radiation minus ground loss. So all this we measure. So if they, they ideally, there should be a straight line here, you know, a line on the um, uh, 45 degree axis or what. Um, so then, you know, it's 100% correct. But now it's only 88%. So that the slope here, uh, 88%. So we have an accuracy is like uh, roughly 90%. So that's both the years we got a similar accuracy, like 88 years also. So it makes sense. Then methane emissions. So this is the first, uh, first panel here is the uh, uh, soil water level. We did not have a so, uh, water table measurement, but only soil water we can measure. So it shows the difference between uh, continuous flood uh, and uh, alternate wet and dry. So red line is uh, uh, control flood, the blue line is the flood. So here, this panel shows the daily, uh, no, sorry, 30 minutes, middle emissions uh, with the time, the whole season. Yeah, the first panel is the LWD, it is the control flood. So this is 2021. The same system. It's the same. Yeah. So consumptive water use, uh, you know, that's 80 between uh, the two systems. Uh, the red line is um, the continuous flood, and blue line is the ultimate better dry. Then methane emissions. Uh, blue line again is uh, AWD, but uh, red is. Uh, so blue light, you know, it's like a 50% of uh, um, methane emitted in uh, control flood is emitted in uh, air of beauty. So uh, the, the control flood <coughs> shows the air of uh, the accumulating and the, you know, uh, control flood changing is the um, time series. And 2021, the same pattern, but if you see the right axis here, uh, you see the top order is going up to 40 uh, kilograms per hectare. The bottom one is 80 kilograms. That means it's kind of double in one season. So uh, to conclude, uh, irrigation applied, um, <coughs> control flood was 50, 58 centimeter, air would be 44. So like uh, my, uh, 24, uh, Centimeter, uh, I mean, percent saving. Then methane, 52 percent saving, and grain yield, kind of 2.2 uh, gain actually. Ut, uh, 9 percent savings. In 2021 also similar pattern, slightly different, but uh, methane emission is more or less uh, same, minus 52 and minus 55. So average. 19% saving in uh, applied it. It's only for irrigation, okay? Applied irrigation flood. Um, then UT, uh, hardly a difference, minus five. So that's the, that much only I have. Sorry for running late. So we have time for maybe one question, if anyone has any. What's the statistic analysis do you run to make sure that the differences are not just due to randomness? There's no set, uh, there's no statistical design. It's a large field scale one. 
If you want, you can do statistics. Yeah, so we assume there's no measurement error or, or anything like that? No, it's because there's no reference. There's only one reference. Yeah, this in Sumatra you can put many towers if you want, then you can. But that's why we do the energy, you know, you say the what you call the energy balance portion. The diagram I showed mm -hmm. that gives the confidence. Mm -hmm. So the the the, the, machi the machines or the sensors they don't have a, a range of oh. accuracy is Oh, I mean we we're, we're certain that there's no measurement error. I guess, oh, okay, okay. What that, that's that's that you know this uh, the difficulty with the playing with the recovery system is you have some basic knowledge where how much it varies the thing and there is a Tori software. Is for correcting all those. You have to interact with the right. data and do all those errors. Right. What, I'm, what I'm saying is, you, you got different towers in different treatments, right? And so, is, is there a way to know that yeah. they are measuring precisely what each other are measuring so that the comparison is? Yeah, sometimes you can put the curves together and look at it. And one point where you can 100% direct comparison is you take the solar radiation, microwave data, solar radiation, you, you take here and you take from image like 100 meters, should not differ. From this measurements, I can show you some, they coincide. And this is making the okay. measurements. 